CIA was working with telepathic rabbits. Okay, what? I swear to God. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> no, what? What? That was no. That was off guard. No. Houston, we have a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. I have never heard that anywhere else except for here on the Mind's Eye Podcast. Basically, it just comes down to give me seven dollars. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Mind's Eye Podcast. And if you haven't noticed, our beloved friend Santiago will not be joining us today because he's given birth. <laughs> he's giving birth and he's taking time to take care of his new child so for the next month or so you would just be seeing me and sean here yeah <laughs> he has fulfilled his human destiny his human destiny to reproduce and now he must cater to that yep that's all and i'd like to salute him and sage to santiago and sage anastasia anastasia yeah <sighs> and welcome back welcome back all right it's gonna be me and you new here, man. Yeah, for the next some good shit. You'll probably see Santiago. Yeah, you you probably see him pop in. He should record a video this while is his he's house. editing this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're literally in his house. Yeah, you'll probably see him. Like, yeah, he's not gone. Um, so, dude, remember the other day mm-hmm. when we were at the train station waiting for Santiago to go home, and that lady was talking to herself. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, the so, bus station. So to give some context. Uh, <laughs> Me, Sean, and Santiago. Santiago has to take a, a bus to go to New Jersey, right? Me and me and Sean and Santiago were all in this bus station, and we're waiting for the bus to take off. So we're sitting there, and this lady was just saying the most outrageous things you could talk about. Like she was saying her that she's a secret agent, and that she kills anyone that she, no one can fuck with her or whatever, and that her husband was John F. Kennedy, and you know all yeah. crazy shit. But the weird thing was, is that she never stuttered. Not one bit. Yes. Like the stories connected and she was naming dates and people. And as she was saying that, I was looking up those people and they lived around those dates. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they are, like she was naming them correctly and those dates correctly. Yeah. It was outrageous, but it also wasn't. Yes. (laughs) Because everything she was saying made sense. Yes. Normally you would hear like a, a lunatic or a person on drugs rambling and they're talking about the most like convoluted shit you can think of. <laughs> yeah. Like there's make no, any sense. <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever. But she had the entire story, bro. Yes. So she was, was kind of scary. Yeah. I was So it led me <laughs> to <minute>. think, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. You know, she could be dead ass. You know what I'm saying? But no, obviously she was not fucking John F. Kennedy's husband. I don't know, Josh. So it's, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. She said John F. Kennedy, and she said James Comey, the former yeah, FBI James director, Comey, yeah. was her baby, da- or something like yeah, that. Her, her second husband. Her second husband. That's what it was. And she was, and she was Agent Dela Cruz. That was her name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was apparently Agent Dela Cruz was the top FBI agent or CIA, yep. agent, whatever she was in the <laughs> field, and she didn't give a fuck. <laughs> she didn't give a fuck. Apparently, <laughs> she, they wanted to like make a movie out of her or something. Yeah, yeah. She was, she was a, saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but everything she was saying, bro, that was it was scary. Yeah. So it led me to think, hmm, because you know we thought she was schizophrenic. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it led me to think, hmm, is she actually talking to someone? Because the way she was talking, she was laughing as if some someone was talking there with her. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it led me to do some research. And did you know that they ran a study? And people with schizophrenia have higher levels of DMT than normal people in no the brain. No way. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. So look, here, here it is right here. Where is it? So they did a study on um, people with uh, a link between, you know, too much DMT with people with psychosis, which is, you know, uh, a disconnection from reality, which makes sense. If you smoke DMT, that shit pff, shoots you to fucking Mars. Right? So here it is. What? 
Increase increasing of dimethyltryptamine and certain features of psychosis, a possible association by Robin M. Murray, MD, which is a doctor, PhD, Richard Rodnight. And I'm going to put this in a link in the description for people who want to check it out. So basically how they tested this is that, you know, when you pee, uh, you have levels of DMT in your piss. Okay. Yeah. And actually some people find a way to like, you know get the dmt out of there well, that's interesting like naturally like, like naturally so there's some trace amount of no DMT. there is dmt in your in your piss that's but, but it's not enough to make you like fucking trip yeah for you sure. know what i'm saying yeah but what they found and this is how they ran the study there was 20 people who were not on you know on who are not schizophrenic or had psychosis and there was 20 people who had psychosis and you know schizophrenia mm -hmm. and what they found damn i have to sign in to get the full article Fuck, this is trash. I hate those articles. Yeah, oh, New ba York so, Times, they do that. Yeah. I hate that. So basically, I read this before. Basically, what they said is that people with psychosis and schizophrenia had higher levels of DMT. What? And I always thought that. Remember that story I told you about this medium who worked in the psychiatric hospital that he was talking to the schizophrenic patient? She was like, there's a man in my fucking room. He's, he's looking at me. He was like, oh, I can, you know, I see it. I know what you're talking about. Like, I could see that guy. Mm -hmm. So I always thought about that. What if there is just an imbalance of DMT in their brain and that it's so much and they're unaware that it's the DMT that they feel like they're tripping out and they really see these beings. Like, they actually see them. Like, they're yeah. there. And you know when you're on a DMT trip, it's there. Yes, it's there. It it's is real. It's real. Except that the difference is, is that you're not aware that that is happening. So you feel... You know, it, it looks like you're crazy. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's like, it's almost like your awareness isn't sufficient enough for the incomprehensibility, if that's even a word to describe that, of, of what's going on. Because like, it's like when you're experiencing it, it's like, it's so much, like all the details of it are so real. You you, you can't deny its existence. So so I found it. It's the, uh, the excretion of DMT was studied among 122 recently admitted psychiatric patients. And normal and 20 normal subjects dmt was detected in the urine and 47 percent of those diagnosed with psychiatric you know with schizophrenia 38 percent of them uh with other non-effective psychosis 13 percent of them with effective psychosis 19 percent of those were neurotic and personality disorders and five percent of them were normal subjects 99 percent of patients were interviewed in a semi-standardized fashion and also categorized according to the variety of operational definitions and psychosis. This is just mad fucking. Well, no, but it's very interesting because I'm processing all like how their study was done. I have a group of 21% of patients of whom 15, 71% excreted detectable DMT. There was a general relationship between psych, um, psycho psychotic symptoms and urinary dmt but specifically schizophrenic symptoms did not appear to be major deter uh determinants of dmt excretion mm -hmm. so meaning it didn't come out in their piss in the ones with schizophrenia you're saying though? yeah it says apparent but a specific schizophrenic symptoms did not appear to be major determinations of dmt excretion oh specific okay yeah they're just okay they're just talking about okay, but the psychosis it. ones the ones who have a disconnection from reality had higher levels of dmt so there were the Correct me if I'm wrong, but they said the standard group, like nothing was wrong. Yeah, the regular them. people, there was not that much. It was DMT. like five percent. Yeah, there was or like something. little to none, but it was detectable. So, so meaning that there is DMT, but it's not enough to make you like fucking see shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's like a standard thing. Like we yeah. know we produce it, and just like you said, like it comes up in our pee, like normally as well. Mm -hmm. Like it's in our brain. Like we've already known that as well. But there's a certain level in which. So the psychosis patients or all of the schizophrenic patients is yeah because uh, schizophrenia is is a certain form of psychosis like an extreme yeah like form of psychosis okay okay and they found that the people usually with the the psychosis uh had more dmt in their piss which is technically like the, the two and two you know what i mean that's fucking crazy that is fucking crazy bro and it makes complete sense like what else in their brain can make them see these kinds of things if not dmt itself so the entire result of it well because this, this sounds extremely groundbreaking then because if they study that and they know that then couldn't they find a cure because it sounds like the entire result of it is just an excessive release of the excretion of dmt right they could technically yes they could so the 
they're just Find tripping off of it pretty, pretty hard. They're just tripping every day, bro. Imagine waking up every day and you're tripping balls. Whoa. What fascinates me, though, is we know our hormonal cycles are constantly fluctuating. So who's to say that we don't excrete a little bit more DMT sometimes? That's what I'm saying. On the regular. And, you know, it made me think of DMT as a very essential part of us. What if the DMT gives us the voice in our head that we're able to communicate with? What voice would that be? Like the voice in your head. Like the one that you'd be thinking about shit. The consciousness? Yeah, the consciousness in your head. What if the DMT is the link between the spiritual and physical world? That it gives you the ability to look into your mind, see shit visually, and in your dreams. So you're saying the mind's eye. like The, the mind's eye, yes. Some people will say pineal, but the mind's eye being the thing that you can visualize within your mind. Yes. That that is the product of the stimulation of DMT. Yes, Josh, I don't know. It's, it's because, I have to pause it. here because I I, I want to be unbiased, but at the same time, it's like I can't really deny that. I can't because I don't have the evidence to support if it does or it doesn't. But at the same exact time, it makes so much sense because I mean, we've, I guess we can, you can say like we've taken a little bit of DMT and we've tried it and it's, it's almost like it doesn't feel like you're taking a substance, it almost feels like something is opening up within you, like it was already within you. Exactly. It, it doesn't feel like a foreign substance. Like if you were to consume like alcohol, for example, you can almost feel the alcohol kind of like whisk its way over your body. Yep. It's like a foreign entity. But when you take DMT, it's almost like, it's almost like there's nothing like within you. It's just everything is just, everything that was already yeah. in you is already opening up. I remember we took that hit off of that DMT oil you had. Yeah. And, you know, we didn't take enough to like blast off. No, shit, no. You know? But, you know, we took, we had a reasonable about size to feel that the effect that the <laughs> yeah. DMT could hold. <laughs> yeah. And I remember it feeling like the veil, like a veil, like a curtain was just moved from my eyes. Mm. And everything seemed more real. Mm -hmm. And that's fucking insane. How the fuck does this substance make me feel more real than, and then without taking it? I think if I were to just propose a hypothesis, um, and of course I don't have the specific science to back it up, but from what I feel, it's almost like the DMT, like you said, kind of lifts that curtain or it almost dissolves the boundary that force field that prevents you from receiving that information. Mm -hmm. And we know from talking about it a lot that we're constantly receiving a lot of information that we're not necessarily conscious of, that we're not aware of, but it is impacting our body in a specific way. So I feel like DMT, it from the way that I felt from the experience, just like you said, is it washes that boundary away. And the feeling that you get when you're on DMT is super surreal because it's not like you're experiencing a sort of psychosis. Like what you're seeing, the visuals are fake. It's almost like those visuals have always been there. And yes. you're, you're, you're putting on a new pair of <clears throat> goggles, a new pair of lenses, and you're seeing through reality much more deeper than you ever have before. Fuck, man. That's crazy, dude. I just hope that one day, you know, the medical industry... Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, helps with these kinds of people. If this, if this study, uh, I don't know if they had done a repeated study on it, but you know, it was a pretty good sizable amount of people to run the study yeah. on. But I'm pretty sure if they, you know, I hope they can find a cure for these kinds of people because it would suck to be like having that imbalance in your brain, mm -hmm. and then everyone just thinking that you're crazy mm -hmm. when there's actually something actually wrong. Yeah, like we all have this substance in our brains right now. Every mm -hmm. living thing. Even trees, ants, that fucking fly right there <laughs> has <laughs> Fucker. some DMT in it. And it's interesting how being like alive beings have this substance in them. Why is that so necessary within a living being? I think it's the link, bro. I think it's the physical link that links the spirit to the physical. Because, you know, the spirituality, like spiritual and physical are one in the same. Right. <laughs> And I feel like the, there has to be a link, a key, or some sort to link you to this realm. And I think DMT is that link. I think you said it perfectly when you said the key. And I think that, bro, perfect that you said that. Because we understand that the world is 
like this uh it's it's everything that we see is sort of like a formation of energy mm -hmm. and this energy has specific properties that interact with the universe and when you break it down like on, on a macro scale we see how specific shapes of spires can form energy you know oh, we can, yeah we can yeah. detect that you're, you know and then on, on a micro scale, we can see how crystalline structures can influence the body and can wield energy, can move energy. Interesting. So, so like I'm thinking like maybe the atomic structure of DMT is what's responsible for its connection with these energy fields on a hypothetical level. I don't have the information to support that. I mean, shit, you really want to find out? <laughs> if you want to find out. <laughs> if you want to find out. <laughs> but, um... I wanted to bring something up when you said, when we were talking about um, like DMT connecting with that spiritual world mm -hmm. and those like kind of like that cosmic energy that we can't really feel. And I, I think an interesting study that I watched online from this YouTube channel called Veritasium. Do you know him? Uh, no. Okay. Well, this is it's like the science YouTube channel. And um, basically there was this experiment that tried to test if humans can pick up on the electromagnetic <laughs> frequencies of the earth. And so we know like birds and like animals can do that, but we never hypothesized that humans could do that as well because hmm. we never saw any like supernatural abilities. Like we can't detect like where North and South is supposedly. And so what they did was they put a person inside of a, a isolated room and they had like these magnetic coils that were around the head of the subjects. And these coils were tuned to the frequency of earth. So whatever, I forget how many hertz it is, but it was tuned to the frequency of, her, of the earth. And there were two of them. And what they would do is they would activate those coils. So they would be, be releasing magnetic fields and it would spin around the subject's head clockwise and counterclockwise. And then they would take the readings from the brain and see if humans were actually being inter interfered with by the, the magnetics. And they found that we were very strongly interfering with these magnetic, um, uh, these electric magnetics from the earth. Interesting. And yeah, it was really interesting because we, we don't like, if you put a magnet to somebody's head, like for most cases, most people, we thought that they wouldn't be able to feel it. But they found out that some people are actually much more sensitive towards those magnets than other people. Mm. So, we, so they try to keep that in mind and right now they're trying to develop the ability to understand more how humans interact with the magnetic fields because what they're trying to do is they're saying if they can understand that better then they can strengthen the ability to feel those magnetic fields and if we strengthen those abilities to feel those magnetic fields we might be able to possess superhuman abilities that far surpass Shit. what we currently are yeah we'll probably be able to predict the weather accurately mm -hmm. 100 percent. you know what i'm saying you could probably do holy shit you could do a lot with that you could sense north to Dude, south like you a, can sense the shift it's like a spider web did you know spiders uh they they build that gigantic web not to look pretty but mm -hmm. they build this gigantic very like web you know what i'm talking about right where they build this gigantic web the pattern they, yeah the pattern and stuff you know that the reason why they do that is because one is to capture prey and two is to feel out their surroundings yeah to see where prey comes out so if so if, uh, if a prey is about to get on the web it will feel that exact string where the vibration is coming from and it'll get that prey holy fuck so that's kind of like Damn, what that's mass sophisticated yeah it's kind of like our magnetic field if we're able to tap into that we'll be able to feel Whoa. the earth if something's vibrating off tune we can figure out where it's coming from Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, holy shit. <laughs> I guess I kind of forgot that the earth isn't the only thing that's releasing those electromagnetic frequencies. Like we're walking around and we're shifting the frequencies of our environment like every second. Yeah. So imagine if imagine if we develop like you, just like you said, I guess, is the ability to sense it on a much larger scale and then somebody could walk into our zone of like a mile. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we could feel their presence. Yo, I heard people say that certain you can feel certain people's energy or souls from, from miles away. Hmm. Yeah, if you're if you're more if you're very in tune and powerful enough, you could feel someone from a, a mile away. Is that that's that, just crazy? That's like that morphic resonance field that we were talking about in previous episodes. That 
the thing with the apes, remember? From oh, the yeah, islands? yeah, yeah. That was just another uh, way that they called it. But the morphic resonance field was like the, the accumulation of all the consciousness, all the energies of the entire species. And it's surrounded like, they theorize like a couple thousand miles. Enough to teach monkeys from one island to the other island how to do That's things. fucking crazy, bro. That is, bro. This shit blows my fucking mind. Nah. <laughs> we're, po- we're much more powerful beings. And I think just like you talked about with the DMT kind of washing over that veil, I think we, we really have to acknowledge that our circle of influence or our sphere of awareness isn't the entirety of the grand scheme of things. Like we mm. have a very big awareness of where we are in the universe right now, like relative to other species, but we don't have the, the total awareness. Oh, yeah, yeah. So new things can come in and can completely wipe the slate of what we thought was imaginable. <laughs> yeah. And I, things like that, like things like that are considered like supernatural. Yeah, bro. That's it. <laughs> That's what I believe, dude. I, I personally believe that humans have the ability the capability to tap into this stuff i think everyone has the ability to Mm -hmm. just that we don't fully know how we don't have those people to teach us i think that's what we're here that's what we're here for yeah i always thought like we were kind of like pushing forward into like a new uh a new plateau like if you think about it like we're, we're stepping into a different dimension when we start to focus on consciousness oh yeah and yeah. what comes from the universe because it's no longer it's like if you think about like a second dimensional being moving into three dimensions that's completely incomprehensible yes yeah, fucking like i actually have a video of this guy who made a 4d minecraft and the way he explained it and it was fucking interesting so as you're playing the game in minecraft it's like a four di- four dimensional minecraft he would press a button and things will shift and certain items could be found because it was hmm. in a different angle of the fourth dimension, right? And he showed how it works for two-dimensional objects, right? So imagine the 2D can only walk in a straight line. It can't walk this way or this way. But if you switch it, this becomes here, and it looks like he is shifting out of existence, just how 4D looks out like to us. We no longer see the corner we just saw. Mm-hmm. And it's shifting and now we see a new corner, but it looks like weird to them. Like it looks like it looks like something's coming out of nowhere. Yeah. It's kind of what it's like for us on the fourth dimensional scale. Exactly. Except there's more space. Yeah. But it's like it's almost like it's just appearing into reality. Yeah, it looks like it's coming out of nowhere. Yeah. 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 It's fucking crazy. I think, bro, we have so many misconceptions about the universe. Like one of the greatest misconceptions that I've fallen for personally is this is going to sound so, the people are going to take this so out of conflict, but no, I don't care at this point, but um, gravity isn't real. Yeah. Gravity is an illusion and we've made it up in this mind. Like gravity is like what we think of like, like a conventional force mm-hmm. or like something that exists in the universe, but gravity isn't a thing. Gravity is what we feel as a consequence of a force. Yes. And really, when we think of gravity, we think of something that pulls. Mm -hmm. And and really, we're we're not being pulled at all. Like, our feet aren't being pulled towards the earth. What it really is, is on a fourth dimensional scale, when we, when we look at it from a higher perspective, we're not being pulled into anything. We're being, we're falling into the curvature of space-time yes thank you for explaining that because a lot of i've I've been on tiktok recently and you know i'm looking at certain posts and shit and there's this one guy i'm actually going to invite him to the show because he he goes online and he tries to debate that gravity isn't real now thank you that you mentioned that because that's exactly what it is and i would like to explain that to this fucking person Mm. so that way he could stop going live and talking bullshit (laughs) <laughs> what was, wait what was he saying no he was basically talking about um i guess you have to tiptoe around this subject but i'm not uh, he was basically talking about that he doesn't believe if we can't prove gravity doesn't exist then the earth is automatically flat no 
And that's what I was, that's what I was, up. yeah, I was just like, okay, I would like to have a conversation with this guy. <clears throat> you know, hopefully, you know, our audience would probably like that too. I would like to talk to this guy, see what's up, why he thinks that way and stuff. We have a conversation, hmm. not a debate, you know, because I'm not here to prove this, 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 and that. We're just here to understand why these perspectives came to be. I'm really interested in that. But the one thing he didn't understand is that he thought gravity was a force, something that just is. Mm -hmm. And what you explained perfectly is that gravity is the result of a consequence of an already existing force. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. But science doesn't teach it that way. It actually teaches you that it is a force. It's, it's, that's the thing. Like then Albert you, Einstein came along and said, no, that's it's, not what it is. It's relativity. It's the, it's this curvature in space time. It's not an actual force of the nature of the universe. Exactly. It's not like, it's not like an electrical Isaac Newton force. Up. Huh? <laughs> so Isaac Newton fucked up. <laughs> he fucked up hard, bro. Yep. And we, no, he, 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 he lost some brain cells when the apple fell. He lost a lot of street cred, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> Albert Einstein pulled up and blew him out the water, bro. He's like, yo, listen, bro, you're wrong. All right. This is not what it is. <laughs> that, that's wrong. <laughs> that's wrong. I'm going to tell you why. And I can't even tell you because you're dead right now. And his whole life is just shambles. <laughs> but, um, what was I saying? Um, oh yeah. It's not like an electrical force. It's not like an attraction or a repulsion. Yeah. It's like, you're literally, you're sliding down the slope of space and time. And we, we as humans, we suffer the consequence because we're constantly moving through time. So when you're constantly moving through time, you're constantly moving through space. So if you understand that space is curved, then as you move through time, you move through the curvature of that space. And, um, I was going to go on, um, fuck, there was something about, oh yeah. Sci so I try to figure out what gravity really, really was. And so I just, once, uh, flat earthers started to talk about like why gravity isn't real and fake. Yeah. Like, like I would like to say something real quick before you continue. Uh -huh. I would like to say that I'm not completely dismissing people who believe in flat earth. I would like to have a conversation about it because obviously you got there somehow. I want to know how you got there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm on the other side. You're on the other side. We can come together and have a conversation. Obviously, there's something that you searched up, or something that you found that made you believe that the earth is not a round shape. So I would just like to say that because, you know, a lot of people might think that I'm just like denying flat earth because I don't know because no. it sounds stupid or whatever. I'm here to have that conversation. I genuinely just want to understand, actually, because I feel like. We've probably seen the same bits of information, but we just perceived it in a different way. Yes. And that's what I experienced like talking to somebody like online who was, who, who believed in that. And they talked about very similar things that we talked about, but yeah. they just viewed it differently. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I was like, I was really trying to get down to the bottom of what gravity is. Cause I'm fucking 22 years old. Like I've been obsessed with science for so long. And just recently I discovered like, fuck, it's not what I thought it is. It's mm -hmm. not like a field that's radiating out and like pulling things toward it. It's more of an illusion because it looks like it is, but really it's something that, it, that it isn't. Um, and so I try to figure out where does gravity come from? Like if gravity is a thing, then where does it come from? And we know that gravity is really just the, the accumulation of mass. Mm -hmm. So there's a direct proportion or the direct correlation to and that. And potential energy too. Yeah, the amount of energy that you have. That's yeah. really all it is because energy is mass. Yes. And so the, the more mass that you have, the stronger it is that your the more energy you hold. Exactly. And that's potential energy. All of that. And so that all that energy, what that energy fundamentally doing is doing is curving space time. So as yes. you accumulate more mass, you, that's the stronger, the stronger you start to curve space time. Um, and then, so I started to look it up. I was like, so where, where does this mass come from? And then I pieced the dots together and, and this is where I went down. I was like, where the fuck does this, where are scientists doing any research into where this come from? So I was like, okay, so, okay. So you have atoms. Okay. And but in the atoms, you have protons and neutrons and electrons. Uh, electron is already a fundamental particle. So you can't break that down even more, mm -hmm. but, but protons and neutrons aren't. And you can break those down even further into quarks. And then you break quarks down even further. And I was like, but what's even further than quarks? And that's exactly what scientists were trying to do in the Large Hadron Collider. Hmm. Is 
the reason why they wanted to study those particles is because they were trying to figure out where mass came from. Mm. What, what gives the universe mass? And they discovered the Higgs boson. And the mm. Higgs boson was one of the most fundamental elementary particles that create the universe. So what scientists are trying to do is essentially, essentially they're trying to get to the center of what makes the universe the universe. Yeah. What gives the universe gravity? So it's like every single time that they're smashing these particles together, they're shedding the layer of what makes that particle a particle. What gives that oh, particle mass? Okay. So they got down to the Higgs boson, and I think there is even more. But I discovered, I was like, gravity isn't, it's not a thing. It's just, it just is. It, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's the consequence of things coming together and we can only understand it as it is once we pull all that stuff apart. Once we get down to the core of what it really is. Mm. And that's what we're trying to discover right now. Because if we can discover the the whole entire reason why we're trying to discover this is, is if we can dis discover what gives things mass and then we can reproduce that, then we can start to do whatever the fuck we want with matter we can literally form matter into however we want on a uh, extraterrestrial level mm, like how you think how you know those yeah, ufo crafts yeah, yeah. were created yeah you can form whatever shit. whatever we want fuck imagine knowing that technology imagine knowing that information and what you could build with that you don't even need to fucking dig for materials anymore josh you could build whatever you want you could build whatever the fuck you want Holy shit. If you said you see yo remember you, you know those those uh those Dyson spheres that are huge and shit? People, you know, when we think about that, you say, how the fuck those people build that? How do you have enough materials on a on a planet <laughs> ah. to build that shit? We don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we don't, nigga. We don't. They <laughs> we don't. probably probably most likely found a way to form matter at will and built the fucking Dyson spheres out of that. Yeah, it's like what 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 blows my mind though is because we we Thought, we, we think that like okay the energy cannot be created nor destroyed it just transferred and transformed exactly but you have to have enough of that stuff to form together but we know that the universe is is filled with stuff like it's not just empty it's filled with stuff and if you can i can break this can down into a fundamental particle and it'd be the same exact thing as this table this light Mm -hmm. the walls anything because it's just made up of the same exact thing electrons protons and neutrons so if i wanted to build a spaceship that had the strongest properties on the planet and i knew Ooh. and i knew that somehow the combination between uh n nitrogen carbon iron helium and phosphorus th or three or whatever all that together made the strongest compound in the world I wouldn't need to go to the forge and bang some fucking metals like a monkey together. I would just have to produce that in the lab and form it at will. Almost like it was formed atom by atom. Like we talked about in the UFO episodes, how Bob Lazar and Jeremy Corbell were describing the atomic structure of these crafts. He they saw how they were just like almost like pieced together atomically that we cannot do that. We cannot create alloys like that here on Earth. God. Damn, that's insane, bro. Yeah, man. Fuck. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Bro, we could probably soon be making some crazy shit, dude. Dude, we could build anything on some Minecraft shit. I think so. I think <laughs> <laughs> on some Minecraft shit. Yeah. Nah, you can't build everything in Minecraft, bro. No, you can't. I mean, you, you can. can with scale. With scale? Hell yeah, dude. Oh, you're talking about like building like the structures of it. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking about like equipment. You can't build everything in Minecraft. Yeah, no, you, you can't. No, yeah. you can. Yeah, you can literally build everything in Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> if it's scaled long enough, big enough. Yeah. You yeah. Can yeah. I guess yeah. like piece by piece. Yeah. But every block of that in Minecraft is like a f an elementary particle. Pretty much. Yeah. You ever it's done pixel art? Yeah, it takes a lot of time. Though. Mad time. And that's just <laughs> big as fuck, bro. I used to make mad pixel art. You did that? Yeah, bro. I fucking made a, a, a super scene blue Goku. No, you didn't. I swear to God. I'll show you the picture. Right I need to see this. that, bro. I'll put it on the screen, too. <laughs> Please put this on the bro, screen. Bro, I spent three fucking... I spent like almost three weeks on it. No way, yeah, that's how bro. much time it took me to make it. Pixel by pixel. Fucking block by block. 
I was making that shit. How do you even, what? Is there like a pixel counter or something? Or did you just zoom in on the screen so for what three I, weeks? Yeah, yeah. So basically, I, I took a picture of Goku, like his face, like I was Super Saiyan Blue. And when you zoom in long enough, you see the individual pixels. And I just matched the colors with the pixels. Oh, my God. You know, I matched the colors of the blocks with the pixels. And eventually, I got to make Goku. Did you ever get lost? Yes, I did. <laughs> you have to count each block and shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn, bro. For any of those who play Minecraft, you understand my 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 pain. Um. Anyways, so I was looking at something interesting, and I think this is, and it's very close to home, actually. Have you ever heard of the legend of Plum Island? No, the legend of Plum Island. Yeah. No. Okay. What is that? This is great. All right. <laughs> so Plum Island is actually in New York, in New York uh, vicinity. It's actually a few miles away from the, uh, I think it's uh, Staten Island. Mm -hmm. Right. So there was this Plum Island was a facility for testing um, wild animals and diseases within animals. Right. Now, this was going on during the Cold War era where they were t testing diseases for animals. And, you know, during the Cold War, they were trying to find crazy technologies and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So this is actually where the famous Montauk monster comes from. It's from Plum Island. Because apparently, allegedly, Plum Island was doing experiments with hybrid animals and testing animals on that island. And actually, to this day, you're not allowed to go to Plum Island. This is near New York. This is near New York. New York, yeah. What the hell? I, I've, I've not heard about yeah, this Yeah, this is what it looks like right here. Interesting. Animal Disease Center. So we cannot enter there We cannot en enter there. It's actually um, owned by the Homeland Security. Why, though? I don't know. What are they doing with these animals? That's what I'm saying, dude. So apparently this is the uh, where the famous Montauk monster came from. Because they were doing experiments with animals, and apparently this animal broke free and was roaming the island and shit. Yeah. Well, I've never heard of the Montauk monster. You never heard of it? I'll show no. you right now. Uh, also, it says right here on Google, if you search up the first thing on Google, it says, because of the nature of the research, access to the island and the research facility is restricted in 2003. The United States Department of Homeland Security assumed ownership of the island and all its facilities. I'm sorry, of Homeland Security? Yeah, Homeland Security. The people that deal with domestic and international terrorist threats? Yes, <laughs> those those people. <laughs> so what is so threatening that nobody can enter that island and, and it's completely seized and controlled by the Department of Homeland Security? That's the fucking question. I need it? to fucking know! This is, that's the fucking question. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? This is the photograph of the creature's carcasses carcass appeared in july 2008 <laughs> what is that yeah what is that <laughs> that should look crazy right that's like a pug and a rabbit put together not only it looks like a fucking demonic creature and a beaver yep what is that so apparently this is where the montauk monster comes from uh the district of montauk new york <laughs> right uh, what's it called where is it i'm reading some shit it appeared in 2008 in the newspaper, uh, the F-22 Raptor, by Janet Jenna Hewitt, who was 26 of Montauk, and three friends that they found a creature on July 12th at the Ditch Plains Beach, east, um, two miles east of the district. So apparently this creature broke out from fucking Plum Island because they were fucking with some animal genes, made some hybrids, and this shit broke out, right? <sighs> now, for people at home who are like, okay, this might sound like some bullshit, you know, during the Cold War era, you know, motherfuckers was testing everything. They were trying to make something, some type of weapon. They were trying to weaponize these kinds of things, you know? So they were definitely, they had money and funding for this, and they were trying to do this shit. Just like how back then they were gaslighting people who said UFOs are real, and they were like, oh, fuck you. Now, recently, if you didn't know, the Pentagon or the people who came out recently are acknowledging um, UFOs as non human. Mm -hmm. They didn't say aliens. But they said it was non-human because they, uh, other countries were shooting it down. And just to say, just after they released that too, once they said they were non-human, they came out and they said, yeah, we have the videos, but we're not going to release it. Because it's a threat to, um, it's a threat to uh, security, national yeah, security. Yeah, national security. 
Like, come on. So in a span of like a week or two, they acknowledged these are non-human because other countries are shooting at them. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not going to tell you shit. Yeah, we're not going to tell you anything. Sorry. <laughs> Just uh, here you go. Yo, guys, <laughs> if we told you, yeah, we'd be fucked. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you you, you got to understand. <laughs> so, so it's interesting that when we talk about UFOs and stuff, you know, people are more agreeable to that kind of stuff because, you know, it, it's, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you talk about, you know, crazy mythical creatures, people are just like, oh, that's bullshit. You know, if you know how to merge genetics together, you can make any fucking animal you want. All you have to do is just splice the DNA, mm -hmm. put two and two together, and there you go. You got a new fucking creature. So the Montauk monster is just a name that people threw on it, but it's an actual hybrid of creatures that we have on this planet. But see, b before I get to the specifics of that, why is it? That people just immediately dismiss that. Because when you say, when you say like the Montauk monster, they have a preconception in their mind of a fucking monster. You know what I mean? Like Monsters Inc. Like Monsters Inc. and yes. shit like that. They say, ah, oh, that's fucking bullshit. Yeah. That doesn't exist because they think it's a naturally occurring animal. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I believe some weird creatures are naturally occurring, but I believe for the most part that, that government facilities were fucking with animal genes and created some new shit. Guys, we got to stop believing that the government is doing, you know, <laughs> legal shit out here. <laughs> right? The government possesses, uh, I don't want to say just the government. We, as a civilization, possess the capabilities to create some shit like that. Th that's, that's completely factual. We have the potential to completely adapt the genotypes and the entire DNA structure of a living being. We can do that with humans if we <laughs> wanted to. They would do that. <laughs> yes. They would fucking do that. In, in time of war, bro, they would do anything. Even Dude. even now, they would just do that just in, to see what would happen. In times of war, they're looking for anything to get an advantage. If they're in a facility making a bunch of fucking these animals and they can control it, they're going to want to do that. Motherfuckers try to make spy birds, bro. Yes. They release birds with cameras <laughs> into foreign countries <laughs> to spy. Yes. They put cameras into cats. Bro, it's a spy on the people. The CIA was working with telepathic rabbits. Okay, what? I swear to God. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> no. What? what? That was, no, that was off guard. No, yes. <laughs> telepathic rabbits? Yes, the CIA was trying to find out if rabbits were telepathic. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I'm not dude. laughing because I'm like, this is crazy because I know shit is crazy in this world. <laughs> But that just caught me so off guard, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so... Bird spies are one thing, but telepathic rabbits is, <laughs> yeah. is something else, bro. <laughs> so before I get back, I'm going to get back to this. Yeah, this please, monster, no, 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 please, yeah. Basically, the CIA, where they did an experiment to find out if the, tele, if, the, if the rabbits are telepathic. So what they did is that they took the rabbit that birthed, the, you know, the rabbits, put it in one room, and they sent and they put the other baby rabbits in another room. And they euthanized the rabbits. Oh. And the, the mother was in a separate room. She didn't see that the animal, that the, her babies were getting euthanized, but they had, um, you know, things on her to measure her. And she felt her babies getting euthanized. Wow. Yeah. So they, they concluded, okay, how can we do this? How can we take this ability from fucking rabbits and put it into humans? How can we take that ability and put it into humans? Yeah, because they're thinking that we don't have it. So they were like, okay, how can we take this and put this into humans? That's what I was saying. Yeah. Because we got it. We do got it. And a lot of other species have it too. Yep. Like that study, just to back you up on that too, but that study where they had, they hooked up plants to each other and they were measuring the same exact thing, oh, how, they would, yeah. how they would respond to their environment. And whenever somebody came into the room with bad energy and bad intentions saying they would hurt the plants... They would feel it even when they just thought it for a second. Fuck. And when another <laughs> when another plant was hurt or even an individual was hurt, those plants were getting an immediate response to that stimuli. Damn. Shit. So it's almost like we're we're constantly releasing this in information that we pick up on. We're just not aware of it. That's the thing. Our awareness, so our reality is our awareness. We're only a we're our reality only fits into our awareness. So we're only aware of things that we we can possibly perceive. But that's not the extent of the true reality. Our reality is only the things that is within that sphere of awareness because that's what we understand as real. It's almost like trying to picture something behind your head. 
It just, yeah. it doesn't exist. Until you turn around and you're aware of it. Until you turn around and you're aware of it. Or in some other cases, you not necessarily just turning around, but increasing the sphere of your awareness to allow more information to come in. Oh, shit. It's like, you know, like... That's where meditation comes in. Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. that's, that's, it helps you increase your awareness to every part of your body. Mm -hmm. Because every, you know, we are aware of our body, but to focus on the feeling of your body, that's the awareness of expanding your awareness. To feel this chair that you're sitting on and also to feel your feet, your mind, and your mouth at the same time and all your entire body, mm -hmm. increasing that awareness, <clears throat> that's fucking insane. You're always feeling it. It's just like how your nose is always there, but your brain ignores it. Oh, you got me aware of my nose now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you always see it. It's just that your brain, you know, yeah, ignores wow, it. Yeah, wow. It just completely blocks it. Yeah. Now you look at it. Oh, there's my nose. Oh, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> and yo, it's crazy you say that because I was just thinking about this stuff last night. I, I went to sleep like pretty late and I woke up sporadically in, in the middle of the night, like probably maybe like 30 or 40 minutes after I fell asleep. And, you know, you're in that weird part of your your sleep cycle where your brain is in a specific um, frequency. I forget the the stage that is it, it like is. Theta, right? Like right as you go to sleep. Yes, yeah, like the theta frequency. Okay, if if it's that, then it's that. I'm not too sure which one it is, but that's one of the frequencies. Like there's alpha, uh, theta, beta, omega, and gamma, and um, delta. Yeah, so I'm not sure which stage that was, but so I woke up like 30 to 40 minutes after I fell asleep, just randomly. And I stare, and I'm on my phone, and so the that phone, mad weird. Phone. <laughs> <laughs> so that <mad> weird. <laughs> I just I open my phone, and I just stare at it for a second, and I just I stop, like all consciousness stops, like I'm still dreaming, and then I get this like weird sensation all over my face, and it's like this tingling, and I start to like fade back in my sleep, but I'm still awake, staring at my phone. And I just get this feeling all around my head. And it's like super, super, it's just very stimulating, very, very vibrant. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is a lot. Like, I don't know how to control it. And I stop and I breathe for a couple of seconds. And I can see it's almost like um, it's almost like when you see those little floaties in your eyes. Yeah. Like they're kind of there, but they're not. That's almost how I saw it in my mind's eye. It was just all those floaties were like an orb of energy. And I breathed and I focused on it. And that energy started to condense. And I started to control it and harness it. And I wasn't just visualizing it in my mind. I would, f I felt a tingling all over my face, bro. And as I was condensing that. And that was my awareness. Mm. I was controlling my awareness because it was like all this energy was just radiating out. It was just firing out like the sun, just shooting energy. And it was too much. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I was thinking of like 10 things at once. Mm if you can imagine that it was like you're all over the place and I took it all and I condensed it and I just like oh here's what it is and it was weird and it was it it made me feel like we're, we're more than what we really think we are because I wasn't just imagining that bro I was physically experiencing that and I never, never I never experienced that before but I know it's always been there so I'm like if we can be more aware of this stuff sometimes and increase our sphere of influence what that allows us to do, it, it allows us to open up our physical and mental abilities more than previously imagined because we're not limited to what is real because what is real is like we mentioned. What is real is what's in our awareness. When we open up that awareness, we open up the possibilities to new realities existing. And who's to say what those new realities are? Our, our, our kind of what we're doing is we're just opening up our space for new information to come in. But when people are very localized and harness their information and don't open up their sphere of influence, their reality only exists as it is and as it was, mm. not what it can be. And meditation allows you to open that sphere of influence for new information to come in. And with that new information, you develop newer and newer abilities to deal and cope with your life and do whatever you... I mean, you do whatever you want with that information, but beautifully said. <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that definitely that's definitely true, bro. And meditation doesn't have to be you sitting down and like, um, no, it doesn't have to be like that. Going for a walk and having your own thoughts is a form of meditation. Yeah, writing things on paper is a form of my meditation. Us sitting here right now talking about abstract ideas while having white claws in us is a form of meditation. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nothing doesn't have to be conventional old ways. You know, we're here to build new pathways. Yeah, I hate people that say like, eh, that's not possible. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> like, sure, there's some things that are impossible, but I don't know. I don't like being hindered in what... I don't like being put in someone else's binary. You know what I mean? Like their their perception of the yeah, world. Yeah, their perception of the world. Yeah. Like, you know, that only exists for you, dude. You know what I mean? In terms of certain concepts, obviously water's water for everyone. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. But to get back to this Plum Island thing, so uh Jenna Hewitt was quoted. We were looking for a place to sit when we saw something looking at something. We didn't know what it was. We joked and maybe it was something from Plum Island. Her color photograph of the creature was in black and white under the headline, The Hound of Bon Calvi. Cal How do you say that, bro? Bonac the Hound of Bonacville. Bonacville. A pun and the, on the name, yeah, I don't know, Bonacers, <laughs> which referred to the natives of East Hampton. And the hound of whatever <clears throat> Bonacavilles by Sir Arthur. What's with these what names? What the fuck is fuck. up with these names? I'm so sorry, guys. Damn. It, it's it's not Josh. Dude, it's these the names fucking are fucking Wikipedia, bro. <laughs> these names are crazy. Conan Doyle. Fuck all the right. names. All right. You're, all right. The point is. You're not going to get your name set on this podcast because yeah. it's too complicated. The, the light heated article speculated that the creature might be a, tur a turtle or some mutant experiment from Plum Island Animal Disease Center. It then noted that Larry Penny. That's a weird name. <laughs> the East Hampton Natural Resource Director had um, concluded that it was a raccoon with, a, with, um, with its upper jaw missing. So what the fuck does that mean? It means that they were working on some shit, messing with some genes, and a new kind of animal, mutant, appeared. All right? This is not a brand new animal. Technically, it is because, you know, now you spliced the genes and you made something new. But it was from already existing animals. And this um, center was originally made to test for animal diseases and see, you know, if there's any potential harm for humans to contract any of these diseases. Wait, but they said it was a raccoon with its upper jaw missing. Someone, yeah, this one guy concluded that it was a raccoon with its upper jaw missing. Did they find it or something? Or yeah, I mean, this is the picture. This is the actual picture that they that they found. Except that oh, it was, that's of it. Oh, yeah, this is the actual picture of it. You know what I'm saying? Why is it like that? Why is it hairless? That's what I was thinking. You know, obviously, if it's hairless, there was some. Um, I, I'm guessing it was some kind of feline kind of animal that they, you know genetically engineered to make these extra features like this like the hairless cat already exists they probably got some of that with some other shit you know what i mean hmm. but it's interesting to to see these kinds of things and people dismiss it as just conspiracy or whatever but these i believe you know it's true these motherfuckers be you know messing around with experimental shit they have a bunch of money to do so they hear here's here's a billion dollars Give me results. <laughs> They'll give you results. Mm -hmm. All right. You go in there and it's like a fucking headless horse and shit. You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> it's just extra shit. <laughs> they got an entire ecosystem of and, and the thing about this is that what's what's dangerous about playing fucking God essentially to these animals is that when you create or mess with actual nature, it now becomes an abomination. And the abomination can be un is not predictable because the original genes that went into it can create something completely different. So this being is probably strong as fuck, and that's why I escaped Plum Island. You know what mm. I'm saying? It's probably strong as fuck. I don't know how it died. I didn't read the entire thing to know how it died. All we mm. know is that it died, and this is just one of many cases of people finding weird creatures. What were they? What were they doing with those tr creatures? Though, like. Did, is there any speculation into what that lab was researching as far as, you know, the benefits? So, of yeah, the speculation is that these beings were supposed, supposedly made, one, to see how genetic experimentation would work with hybrid genes and also to see if they can <clears throat> weaponize this. Weaponize a genetically mutated animal? Yes, hmm. for war. 
What are they going to do? Just throw a bunch of fucking mutated raccoons I mean, out yeah, into the field? You get five kills, you call them the oh dogs. Oh my God. <laughs> you get the fucking rocket coon <laughs> from Guardians of the Galaxy, bro? <laughs> yeah. Yo! Yo, Marvel is just foreshadowing everything yeah, right bro. now, bro. You see a raccoon with a rocket launcher yep. in Afghanistan, bro? <laughs> You're you not going to expect it. And you won't even see it. It could just be a regular raccoon, and it just stands up. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like got what? the strap, bro. <laughs> Put him up. Put him up now. <laughs> Speak English and shit. Nah, be fucking crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think. Um, I mean, was that all you knew about that? Like, well, that's pre- that's pretty much all I knew about it. Because the- I heard of the Montauk monster. Yeah. So I never looked into it, and then my my stepfather told me about Plum Island, and he said that there was allegedly doing genetic experimentations with animals and that's the reason why it shut down and to this day we can't go over there bro they were doing genetic experiments on people right? yes <laughs> oh, so this was in the same same time frame as the war in germany world war one world war two when was it oh, world war two so world war two so th- yo there were people in nazi germany that were doing oh they were crazy doing the craziest shit bro and during um I forget the name of the operation, um, but during the, uh, the the dissolvement of Nazi Germany, when the United States was recruiting people from oh, Germany, Operation Paperclip. There we go. Yeah. During the Operation Paperclip, when the United States was recruiting uh, German scientists, Nazi German scientists for uh, American projects, they were going all over the place, from space aeronautics to missile development. And I'm sure, or they, well, they definitely talked about how there were some people in um, the the uh, field of biology as well because they were doing crazy experiments on people and uh, genetic disorders and schizophrenia and they needed all that research like it was fucked up what they were doing but the United States was like damn they got some they got a lot of shit out there yeah because <laughs> like we can't do that over here because it would be fucked up but they were doing that like with no consequences so I'm like what do you think they found as far as like the biological experiments, like what do you personally think they found through that experimentation? I don't have a lot of information that I've gone that I've gone off of from that because it's been like so hidden, and I think like I get a little hesitant to talk about it because it it, it it's kind of more of a conspiracy because it's just relayed information. But some of the things that um, some of the things that I've heard are disgusting. Uh, mm-hmm. mutilations yeah. of, of, of people like uh, taking out pieces of their brain to see like how they would function fuck uh, um, mutilating it in specific ways to see like how people disassociate I think they found a lot of like crucial evidence into how like mental disorders are are, are formed as far as like I, c- I couldn't tell you Josh how the fuck do you just sign up for that and be like hey you, you kiss your wife goodbye. You're like, I'm going to work. And you're just fucking experimenting on people. <laughs> That's fucking what crazy, you, bro. What did you do today, honey? And you go home. He's like, what did you do today, honey? Oh, we, you know, we were just, you know, trying to make bombs and shit. Yeah. Meanwhile, you were fucking taking brains out of people and shit. That's, I can't imagine that. I they, tortured a twin to see if his sister would feel it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, That's pretty much what happened down there, it's bro. kind of fucked up. That's but fucking crazy. I, I I know that the United States was very heavily invested into some of the research that that of course they, they did, bro. I mean, the United States is the kind of person that we're just gonna take what you have already mm-hmm. and bring it over here. <laughs> we know this with oil. <laughs> yeah, there is. Um, I think, you know, we're not really a stranger towards. Uh, masking, you know, what oh, we're yeah. doing, like yeah. with, uh, you know, the false flag operations, stuff like that. Like, um, one thing I found interesting actually just recently is remember when Elon Musk was making the boring company? Like, the boring company? You ever heard of the boring company? Is it boring? No. Mm. Well, yeah. Is it? <laughs> it is. It's okay. boring tunnels. Boring, like, in terms of like, this is boring. Or is it no. like another word? What does it mean? Boring. So boring means to like create like a tunnel or a oh, hole. Oh, I heard him about to speak that on Joe Rogan. He's like, yeah, we just built, you know, we just drilled this big ass tunnel. He's like, how the fuck do you get the permits for that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? What, what I found fascinating is at first, so they talked about they wanted to create an underway, underground highway system to decrease the amount of traffic. And um, so recently what somebody was talking about is that was actually a cover for them to prevent 
high-speed railways from being developed in the West Coast and across America. So the whole these motherfuckers. Yes, the whole plan was this: they during that time when the Boring Company was doing their whole um, ad and press release, that was when legislation was going to be passed, I believe, to allow and. Uh, you know, create the constitutional landmarks and foundation for high speed high speed railways to be developed all over the country. And so during that time, um, that would have screwed with a lot of like automobile uh, infrastructure, a lot of companies like that. So somebody was saying how they created the boring company to be able to for for Congress members to be like, that's not worth our investment to create high speed railways if they're creating a hyper hyper speed underground highway system that would completely you know negate the need for a uh, high-speed railway and then so they did that whole press release all the ads for how this would change you know the entire infrastructure of driving in america and then they just stopped they stopped development of the tunnels after they canceled all funding and all support for the high-speed railway legislation so once they cut that off, then they stopped building all those tunnels for the Boring Company. And people were saying how they used the Boring Company as sort of like a cover up to get rid of the development of high-speed railways to keep cars and automobiles relevant. So These motherfuckers, yo. Yeah. People would, you know, pay for cars and not use <laughs> transportation. And That's insane, bro. I I hate hearing stories like that. Yeah. The the The... The slap on humanity to keep them in their place. Well, we know about it. We know about it a lot. And that's why they were holding, you know, a lot of UFO intelligence from, from us. Have you ever heard of, you know, I think I told you about the dumbs, right? The deep underground military bases. Yeah, deep underground military bases. Yeah. Apparently, there's a huge under railway system that connects the world in a super high speed, faster than planes. Oh, wow. Faster than fucking planes. I think I heard about that. Yeah, apparently you can get to China and like fucking fast as fuck from here if you were to get on the, one of those trains. Fast as fuck, boy. Fast as fuck. I can't tell you miles per hour. It's fast as fuck. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, and apparently it runs in electromagnetism. Oh, is it like, don't they do that already? Uh, With like certain high-speed rail cars? Maybe. I don't know. But I heard but that if you know if you know how to really attune the electric magnetism, you can go faster. It's underground, though, right? It's underground. So is it in a vacuum chamber? Maybe. Because if you put that in the vacuum chamber and you had, like, no wind resistance, then you could accelerate to however fast you really wanted, right? It could. Yeah, it probably is. I don't know the full details of it. Maybe someone in the comments can comment down below about yeah. that stuff. But I heard that shit is it really does exist. But to bring it to the public, you know, it's a big money loss there to the fast as fuck to China. Dude, imagine you won't even have to fly anymore. You just get on a train. You'd be like, yo, so I'll be in Florida in two minutes. <laughs> yo, two <laughs> minutes. I'll see you in Florida in two minutes. Boom. Blast off. <laughs> I'd be worried crazy. about the G-Force. Like, I don't know how they would combat that. Like, you know. You probably got to go through some, like, fucking preparation for that. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you would have to take a certain amount of time to accelerate to that speed. But um, you know what else goes really, like, um... Speaking of Elon Musk again, this guy is always in the spotlight, bro. He always rubs me the wrong way sometimes. He rubs me the right and the wrong way sometimes. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very hard with him. You, you can go this way, yeah. Um, but so Elon Musk is actually teaming up with NASA to create a, a I think it's fast. No, not faster. It, it's a light speed engine. Yeah, I said this. Is it the same one that we were talking yes, about, though? Yes, that's the same one I was talking about. Which one? The one that had a tiny particle accelerator inside of oh, it. Oh, fuck. Yeah, bro. I mentioned it. I still got like, you know, almost a million views on TikTok. But with the particle accelerator and getting yeah, to Mars. Bro. and like, I said that. Some... Damn it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that was some great piece of information. That's the same episode where Saul was on. Oh, fuck. That was a while ago. That's yeah, why yeah, I don't yeah, remember 50. that. Yeah, episode 50. Yeah. But dude, this guy is always in the spotlight, bro. And like, imagine, bro. You have a particle accelerator in your engine? Bro, that would be fucking crazy. Yeah. Shit. But I knew it. Damn, I was going to talk. Well, you guys can go back to the episode and Josh talked about it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, they call it the Helica engine. The Helica engine. Yeah. A particle accelerator. Man. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about this actually another day because, um, damn, Santiago would love this. and But I know you've talked about this before, but just recently, I think a couple of days ago, they found a 
1.8 million year old tooth from a human fossil out in Georgia. Mm. Not the state, but the country. Mm, country in like Russia, like near Russia and shit, right? Yeah, out there. I don't know where Georgia is. Georgia. <laughs> in Georgia. It was 1.8 million years old. And that completely shattered the entire conception of human travel throughout. I knew it. Africa and Asia. You were right, Josh. See, I'm a fucking gangster You're when it comes to this <laughs> shit. Real G. <laughs> <laughs> but what, did, what, did they, what happened? So they discovered that out in Georgia and they were like, yo, what the hell? Like, this shouldn't be impossible. It kind of, it kind of discredits the entire picture of how we migrated from Africa and Rome throughout the Europe. Um, so apparently we, we, we were out there, we were roaming out from Africa a lot, a lot earlier than we previously thought because they found it like out wherever Georgia is, is pretty far. And you know, previously we thought humans, this is the homo, the homo uh, gene, the homo species, we thought that was around like 200,000 years ago or something, a like just more, a couple yeah. of years ago. And then it started to push out to like 400 and then 500 and now it's 1.8 and it's like, how far can we push that? And there's another, I think the farthest that they've ever found from a homo fossilized species was 2.8 million years ago. Dude, I'm telling you, bro, humans have been here for millions of years. That changes my perception of evolution of where we've come from. Dude, when I talk about the fucking Egyptians and how they build the pyramids, they're around a long time. I think I, okay. I think they're around a lot longer than we than we thought. Yeah, a lot longer. And Just, that's interesting. They found that, and I, you know, that's what I like. Eventually, science catches up to the people, and it's funny that you know they've been known this stuff. I believe they've been known this stuff. I just believe that it's released in a certain fashion so that it could give the illusion to progression. You know what, you know what I'm saying? I think you're right. I think the reason why that's the case is I I think it would change our entire perspective if we found out that we were a lot smarter than we think we were hundreds of thousands of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I think the narrative from how I grew up is a couple hundred thousand years ago and even like a million years ago, we were fucking dumb idiot apes. We were banging rocks together, banging stones, and we didn't know how to even really think. And I think... I think now that we're pushing that farther and farther, now we're realizing that humans had the psychological development enough to be able to do things that we previously thought we weren't possible of doing and thinking. So that gives into the idea that maybe we had civilizations far into the past that were hyper, hyper developed. And they had things, they understood things about the universe that maybe we don't even understand today or mm. that we didn't even fathom they understood at that point in time. And every single time that, that we find out that these fossilized records date back farther and farther, we start to realize that we had the capability to do what we're doing now, but farther into the past. And that begs the question then, how many civilizations in the past were capable enough of being civilizations, having the physical capabilities and the mental capabilities to be a civilization? And how many of them do we not even know about? What did they do, you know? Fuck. That's a great fucking question. That's a question for another day. That's a question for another day. Yeah. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, we're going to cut it off here a little bit shorter today, guys, because we got some heat coming in for y'all next episode. We want to save it for there. Well, thank you for tuning into the Minds Eye. We come on with content every week. Please make sure to tune in and subscribe to the fucking show.